Good morning, friends. Hello. Hello, hello. Hope you're having a great day. There is goodness in where you are. Hope you're keeping warm. It's a chilly day. It's still cold. Like everything cooled off over the night and frost warning and all. Hey, Jamie. Hope you're healing well. Things are good for you. Karen, good morning to you. Hello, everybody. Ah, sun is warm in a square. I hope that's true. Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. You doing all right today? Hi, Jane. Hi, John. Hope you're doing all right. Up there, probably frosty in your neck of the woods. You doing well? I so appreciate your occasional uh, um, music makings that you uh, you post um, online and uh, on mountain streams. It's so great. So. Hey, John, good morning to you. Chilly morning, indeed. It's even even chilly here in the city. Good morning. I made it. Yay, Vicky. Hey, glad you're here. All right, friends. We'll get going here in a sec. Great to see everybody. All right, good morning, everybody. It is the 18th day of May on this Thursday at 11.11. And today is in the traditional church is known as Ascension Day. And it's the day that Jesus uh, actually rose up into and was taken up into heaven. Um, Jesus in the, in, in the Hebrew tradition, if we consider Jesus in the Hebrew tradition, we certainly should, that uh, is the third person to have this uh, to have this event happen to him. The first is Enoch, um, even though he, Enoch is not recorded as the Book of Enoch is not recorded as one of the the Hebrew Bible. Uh, Enoch is raised up and ascends into heaven, and then there is Elijah, who is who uh, one of the the great, if not the greatest, of prophets. Probably Moses is considered the greatest prophet, but Elijah is right up there, and um, he ascends to heaven in the in the great chariot, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, the great chariot of fire in the sky that we see that uh, that uh, the, that is famously reported. And then Christ comes to the world and ascends to the right hand of the father. Now, however you take these images and however you understand these images, what is what is absolutely true of all three of these characters actually that if you look at any of them um but it, it is clear in the in scripture from what uh from jesus's point of view is that this is the completion of a mission that christ came into the world to do a certain thing and having completed a certain thing he ascends into heaven now, I think this is an interesting, this, you know, this this is an interesting notion. I think to to, and we're going to talk about this Sunday, by the way, that it we're going to we're going to celebrate Ascension on Sunday and talk about that. But we're not only going to talk about this aspect of it. So um, it's a it's a little different. But this notion of of mission of being of having a thing to do in this world, of having a thing, of having a purpose, and that everything kind of runs through that purpose. And and this, as we look at, you know, the gospel stories, as we look at the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, as we look at what is God trying to do with humanity anyway, um, in in a, in a larger sense, and then we look at it on a microcosm and a microscale what is God trying to do with me? And what is this flow of 
of events and stuff and things that have both happened to me over time, but also that I've chosen and that I've that I'm that I'm in the constant act of of making choice for. And how is that playing out the mission in the world? You see, there's there's uh, Jesus leaves us with mission also that that we not only as the church but as as you know as individuals there's 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 these different places where the the mission of what it is that we're supposed to be doing having been left in the wake of Jesus completing his mission is also at work and and I'm I'm always struck by this sense of of missionality like like when we because it's because I think we we often uh set this aside and a great deal like like whether it's we set it aside because we want to go have fun or we set it aside because we have we feel like we have duties and responsibilities to do that are very important we have very important things to do over the course of our lives in the course of our time we have we that that what but um and we have children to raise we have jobs to do we have we have people to be responsible for and care for we've all you know all of this this myriad of things in which we are a part of and yet in all of that there is this there is i think there's this underlying tone of of what we miss along the way that might be our our true mission it might be what we're really about. So Jesus leaves this, you know, there, there's a bunch of different places in scripture where it says kind of the, the, the parting instructions of, of, uh, of, of Jesus. And uh, as we go forward, um, you know, in the kind of the what do we do now category of the ascension, you know, in Mark, it's the end of the end of Mark, it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the, to the whole creation. We'll talk about that one in a second. But then, then in Matthew, you know, Matthew reports this. Go for therefore and make disciples to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, that kind of seems like a thing to do. Like, all right, I can, we, can, we can work on that. And then Acts you know, the one Acts puts, you know, the, the first chapter of Acts puts it this way. This is, so this is Luke. So we get Mark, so we get, you know, here we get Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it says this, but you will receive the Holy, the receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. These mission statements these this jobs we're supposed to be doing i i, I want to kind of unpack this a little bit for you today and, and with us because i i um, i feel like we're particularly we in the church get hung up on this like we're we're supposed to be growing the church or bringing people into fellowship or doing some stuff or running a program or doing some advertising or creating an outreach or tending somebody's wounds or doing something like and none of that i feel like none of that speaks to the true heart of what it is for us to to bear these these missions as a as, as a in a personal way the great victor frankl who was a, a kind of he was a psychologist um who ended up in the concentration camp in germany and and he bore witness to some of the most horrible things and some of the most some of the most heroic things of what humanity would have to offer in the in the extremis of what it was to be in a concentration camp and to see that unfold and in, and in his book uh, man's search for meaning at the end of uh you know after after the war he he uh, he tries to put together and make some sense out of this and he, and he says it this way he says everyone has his own specific vocation or mission in life everyone must carry out a concrete assignment that demands fulfillment. Therein, they cannot be replaced, nor can his life be replaced. 
or, or nor can his life be repeated. Thus, everyone's task is unique as his specific opportunity to implement it. You are set in a particular time, in a particular place, in a particular way. You are looking at a particular device, in a particular car, living room, bathroom. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, you're in a particular workshop. You're in a particular mood. You're in a particular uh, uh, state of mind. You're in a particular way. There is this specificity of your life. You have a particular mission and a particular vocation, which has been laid upon your heart. And everyone suggests, Frankel, must carry out a concrete assignment that demands your fulfillment. There's a thing that that when we're looking at, you know, here here is Jesus who on this Ascension Thursday, this Feast of Ascension, this the 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 Day of Solemnity, as it sometimes is called, it is is this notion where the the mission has been completed, and now what does Hebrews say? You know, Hebrews kind of, uh, you know, the beautiful theology of kind of what happens next is, says it this way. Consequently, he is able to save to the utmost those who draw near to God through him. And since he always lives to make intercession for them. So, yeah, if you're still with me, if you, if you haven't completely dozed off, and I know we're kind of big theologically minded today, but if we take those two and we start to put them together, what we start to get is this is this picture of of God inviting us to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. The whole of creation. That's not just people. That's, that's not just that's it's not just stuff. It's not just creation. It's not just it's it's that this it's this the 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 whole of our being and to proclaim it to the to the whole world to receive the power of the Holy Spirit and to go to the ends of the earth with it, to therefore and go forth and baptize disciples. Are you kind of feeling it? Are you, are you seeing it? Are you there? Like, like this is a 30,000 foot view. This isn't, this is hard. To, this isn't necessarily, you know, our marching orders. But at our heart, at our heart and at our being inside of each one of us, in terms of the way we're wired, like, you know, again, I'm a big Enneagram guy. If you want to figure out how you're wired, get into Enneagram stuff and figure out your Enneagram type and look at look at how both you are built for glory and you are built for sin, both in the same way and the same type. Uh, you know, Myers-Briggs, any of it, like just your oh, the way which we which we are called to be in this world and the particular place and the particular time and the specific setting that, that you are called to it. And that in that is this grand and incredible and amazing adventure, which is so large and so um, so much so eternal that it that it's an adventure that that uh, that people have gone on, that ancients have gone on, and that you are called to go on now in the one grand and beautiful thing you are called to bring to this world that is encapsulated in who and what and where you are placed. You see, we talk these big terms and these big ways, and we talk about these big thinkers and these big events from, you know, concentration camps and crucifixions and, you know, miracles of ascension into the sky. And, and none of this uh, it, it seems to kind of resonate with, well, you know, I get up and I have my little cup of coffee and I kind of look at the bird feeder and I let the dog out and, and kind of, okay, then what? Um, friends, there is a beauty in you. There is a shining in you. There is a wonder in you. There is a grace in you. There is a miracle in you that is placed perfectly in this world right here and right now. There is a, a sealed order inside of you, which the world is waiting for you to crack open. The, the, in the 
uh, in the old uh, uh, seafaring days. Um, particularly, this was true of the British ships, but it's true of ships everywhere when they would they would be set to sea with sealed orders, meaning no one outside of the admiralty, no one outside of the kingdom of the palace of the of of where the ship was to go and what the ship was to do would would know outside of just the just a few of the commanders just a few of the of the king who would who would be able to st- and, and admirals who would who would set forth the the ship on its place so that the enemy might not know and the, the captain would prepare his ship and he would get all the things ready and, and he would train his crew and he would get all of them, all manner of things. And then he would set out from port, still not knowing where he would go, he was going and where he was heading. And yet when he would, he would, uh, he would round out into the channel and he would get so many miles off of shore that the time would come that he and his officers would assemble and they would break the seal and they would read the sealed orders of where they were to serve and what they were to do and really what mission they were to take on for king and country. And friends, I think the time has come in the days in which we live. And maybe some of you have already cracked them open and you you have a clarity and a beauty of it. And maybe some of us are just still floundering around. Or maybe there's often, and, and largely, the reality of life is that we're kind of somewhere in between. That that we we are we may we may have known the the intimations of these orders for years and yet we yeah uh, yet we uh, yeah we don't consult them we don't go back to them daily we don't we don't check in with them that the that the wind and the waves and the and the tempest of our lives kind of get a kind of can overwhelm us a little bit but the invitation is to break open our sealed orders that thing that in this time and this place and this occasion, you were made for. If Viktor Frankl can look out over the desolation and the human horror and pain and refuse and tragedy and catastrophe of a yard filled with concentration camp victims and can look at every one of those hallowed faces and see within them a specific mission and a specific vocation and a specific and true calling for each and every life even there if he can bear witness to it in his time so too can we bear witness to it in our lives friends go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation Whatever in your tiny little corner of it, in your tiny little cell of the great body of Christ that you are a part of, to to make your music, to craft your being and your wares, to tend your people, to that it is it is not an an Truly, at the end of it, just as Christ's ascension bear witness to you today, it is not the, it is not truly the thing that you will do and the way in which you will spend those hours that is truly the great, uh, that that is truly what it it is at, at stake, although that's truly a part of it. It is who you are and who you are becoming in that proclamation. As, as the great quote attributed to Francis, although he never said it, but um, it still just fits him too well for us not to, to attribute to him. He said, in all things, preach the gospel. When necessary, use words. That our lives are the living gospel. Our lives are the living good news, which is all gospel means. Our lives are the living good news. Shine your light. Sing your song. Build your creation in this world. And reconsult, or, or maybe for the first time, crack open your sealed orders, your true mission in this life. 
Because what a shame it would be to discover at the end of your days that you never truly lived. To discover at the there was a there was there was a great thing that you were born for that never quite found its way. It doesn't mean that God will love you any less. It doesn't mean that, that there isn't joy and abundance any more available for you. But it does mean there is an adventure here. That God calls us to proclaim the gospel to the world. God calls us to take up the Holy Spirit. God calls us to make disciples of the nations, not because God needs us to do that. God's already done it. God needs us to do it so that we can participate with him so that we can find our way to our place at the table, so that we can become and become and become again the, this person filled with life and life in abundance. Friends, take up the adventure of your life. Take up a mission on this day, this Ascension Thursday. All right, my friends, peace and grace to you today. I pray you have a wonderful Ascension Day. And we'll pick it up next week. We're going to celebrate Ascension on Sunday. So if you're worshiping with us, I hope you'll join us either here on online or in person, 282 Rock Street. It's awesome. All right. Peace and grace to you, my friends. We'll pick it up next week with another 1111.